Ave Virginaries and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be exploring the multiple ways of suppressing those Scottish scum as the most noble of nations, England. In this guide, we'll be going over the initial diplomatic situation, early wars, later expansion and the ideas that you should go for. And if we get a thousand likes on the video, I'm also gonna do a starting moves guide for the nation of France. When it comes to your initial diplomatic situation, England starts off quite well off, one of the strongest and biggest great powers in 1444 so you are gonna have a fun game first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be going for the alliances with Castile Aragon and and Austria but if these nations rivaled each other you're gonna have to check what rivalries they have so as to avoid losing these alliances in my case Castile and Austria is good to ally whilst Aragon despite them probably helping me against the French means that I cannot actually ally Castile or Austria if I ally Aragon our own rivals are gonna be France Scotland and Burgundy and once we start the game we're gonna do a pro gamer move we're gonna be disbanding all the forts on the French mainland here including Calais as well as the fort in Montgomery these are basically just a waste of your economy we also will be exploiting manpower development in all of these provinces lower the autonomy beforehand so you get more manpower if you need to lower the autonomy such as the one in Alençon and Maine do the same even in Calais and of course the south parts as well next step we're gonna do is we're gonna unstate these parts and after we've unstated we're gonna concentrate development in both of these provinces same thing in Normandy concentrate development same thing in Maine concentrate development and then guess what's gonna happen next you probably knew this didn't you we're gonna release Gascony as well as Normandy as our vassals and after we've released them as our vassals we're also gonna give Normandy the province of Alençon and again we can concentrate once more development in all of these provinces which basically means that London starts off with 38 development from 1444 all right now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna exploit the manpower in London don't be too afraid to do this the reason for this is because we want to do the mission levy the troops as soon as possible and we only need to exploit development in France as well as in the capital state that means Kent Sussex Oxford all of these provinces as well as we have to recruit one mercenary company to get this established when it comes to your estate State seize land for 5% crown lands, as well as give out the land of commerce for the plus one diplo and monopoly on textile. Give the admin plus one as well and the monopoly on wool, as well as church sanctuaries. Go for whichever discipline or morale of armies advisor you might have, as well as for John Fortescue, which is a scripted advisor that's 50% cheaper, and whichever you might have as an admin advisor that's available. One more thing I want to note is that if you sell crown lands before you on pause and you do all of this you get 300 ducats more and it is worth it you start with a thousand ducats in your treasury and you can get this crown lens back quite fast after we expand a little bit make sure you get your debate done as well in parliament whatever you need most and recruit the independent company the biggest of the mercenary companies by the border with the scots whilst the rest of your army you're going to be sending into mainland france here since we will be fighting both the french and the scots if they ally 50% of the chance the French will ally the Scots. Doesn't always happen. The thing is, we'll be attacking Scotland first, and if they ally the French, then we have to fight on both sides. Before we continue with the video, I'd like to ask you a favor. If you enjoy watching my videos once in a while, consider subscribing. Would really help the channel out so much. I'm trying my best to get to 50,000 subscribers, and I cannot do it without you, so hit that subscribe button. After the mercenary company has been recruited, and after I've actually exploited manpower in a couple more provinces I got the levy the troops mission which gives me a subjugation CB on Scotland as well as permanent claims on the entirety here of the British Isles with that I am on the 11th going to attack the nation of Scotland with the subjugation CB this will call in the French and I am not attacking the French directly because I want to piece them out fast in this initial first war since I want to start a second war afterwards with my reconquest of Gascony's 
Corps, which is basically most of the south tip of France. I also managed to secure the alliance with the Aragonese without them canceling my alliances with Spain or with the Austrians, but if it comes to that, I will definitely drop the Aragonese so that I can keep the Castilians and Austrians as my allies. The 11th has arrived and I am going to use the subjugation CB against the nation of Scotland. Booyah! There you go. Did not cobbledrate the French as I will not be taking any lands from them in this initial first war. Doing this also gives you the 100 years war mission which cancels the main event and also gives you claims on the entirety of northern France. Do not let the French scare you. They have been known to eat snails and frogs so obviously their troops are are not as good as yours. That being said, I do recommend that you stack your troops close together. The French do have more snail eating troops than you do. And don't be shy to recruit some extra mercenary companies. Remember that you are ridiculously rich and you can always just sell in four years some more crown lands if you need to, to get even more high amounts of cash. Also, your war target is the capital of Scotland. So make sure you rush for that whilst you're wiping out their armies and your fleet is superior. Make sure you hire an admiral too for it and you will be ruling the waves don't worry about the french they cannot touch you on the mainland and as long as we get one fort or the capital and a fort we can piece them out even a white piece is not bad since we want as short of a truce as possible after quite a few tough fights against the french i've managed to get them down to a zero which means they barely accept a white piece with me after winning multiple battles losing a few as well and taking two of their forts so it's actually a little bit more difficult than I would have expected but still go for the white piece you want to have a short truce with them since we want to attack them again whenever you occupy Paris you can go for the strategic control mission that gives you permanent claims on Brittany and a PUCB on the French you can take it now or you can take it in the second war that I'm going to show you in a little while in five years against the French since we will be using that time to finish off the Scots and their Irish allies when you're ready to peace out the Scots before you go for the vassalization thing which is what you're really into here since the main war is to vassalize Scotland and with the subjugation CB we can do that it's gonna give you AE with the nations in Ireland since they are the same culture group here so because of that I recommend that you attack the Irish nations I've attacked a few of them and I'm gonna attack the rest of them at the same time since they cannot join a coalition if they are dead can they also take note you likely will be taking a few loans I I started taking I have one loan right now but probably will take two or three more loans it's all good loans are a feature peace out the allies of the Scots first so that's in my case Ofali and Sligo make sure you cobbledrate them I actually forgot to cobbledrate them so I'm taking double the aggressive expansion penalty from annexing these two small and significant countries but hey that's just because I am a pro gamer as you can tell all the Irish will join in a coalition so before you hit this button I recommend that you attack individually the Irish miners so that they don't join in a coalition against you, making it harder this way to annex Ireland. All right, after a couple of years, we finished off everybody here. Luckily enough, the Inner Hebrides or the Channel Isles, whatever this country is called, was allied to one of the Irish miners, namely Desmond. So we called them in before our actual truce, which would have been 10 years later happened, but in hindsight would not have had to get more aggressive expansion because we had cores from our vassal Scotland if we attacked once our truce expired. In any case, we will be piecing out these guys first and we are going to be fully annexing them, of course, and we'll even give these provinces out to Scotland since they already have the core and we will be merging with Scotland after we get Admin Tech 10. Take note, you will have a small bit of a coalition, mainly France, Burgundy and whatever is left in Ireland. I could not attack Ulster because they were allied to Brittany and they also joined in the coalition against me which has formed it is a coalition of flies but it is Friesland Brittany and Ulster regardless before I attack Ulster and the Britons I have to attack the French apparently the French have joined in a defensive war against the Burgundians who in turn attacked Provence so there you go coalition of nobody because we ate most of the people who would have joined the coalition now before we core all of this I intentionally did not core so I can show you you can concentrate development and you get more by having the entire state here than you would otherwise of course if you have a situation such as Ulster don't wait until you get Ulster 2 would take a little bit too 
too long. Make sure you lower your war exhaustion, core up everything, conquest of Scotland is going to give you more claims here, and some admin points which you can use to core even more lands. Make sure that you make either the Danes or somebody you have an interest in attacking as your rival, and finish coring all of these that you can finish coring. Okay, that's actually everybody. And there you go, reverse Ireland. North Ireland is not ours, whilst the rest of Ireland is ours. If that's not ironic, I don't know what is. We're gonna ship over our troops to the mainland before we attack, of course. If you're struggling with the liberty desire of your subjects, you can always pay off their debt, which should help quite a bit, as well as improve relations, and remember for the Scots to give them the two provinces, which they have whores on. When it comes to the Irish, lower autonomy, let them rebel so we can kill them off faster and get rid of the rebels once and for all. You can always recruit the Grand Company to take care of rebels if you need to. Remember that you can give out the indebted to the burgers loan, five loans for 1% interest, which is basically almost nothing. And these five loans are gonna help you out, both with keeping your mainland here pacified, as well as in the war against the French. When you attack the French, most likely you can call in the Austrians or Castilians if they have some interest, or if you have enough favors with them. We got 20 favors with the Austrians since we've been currying favors, which also means that we can ask for soldiers and cash if we need to. However, we don't need that right now. Maybe some soldiers would not hurt, and you can use the other favors to attack the French, of course. We'll be setting our war goal as the province of Limousin, and we will be attacking them. Make sure you rush the capital and the province that you have the war goal on, so you get your ticking war score at the same time. Whenever you get a chance, peace out the other frog-eating nations of Provence and whoever else might be allied to France, and keep focused on your main war goal, of course. You want to take the Gascon lands in this war, as well as as much monetary reparation as you can get, since you want to fix your economy, which likely will be quite in shambles with the buttload of loans from fighting out this war. Once you have all the war score you need, piece them out, give out all of the provinces that Gascony has a core on to your vassal Gascony, take all the money you can get so we can start fixing our economy. Coalition-wise, shouldn't be anybody since it's just 16 aggressive expansion, but taking pretty much all of South France here, weakening the French considerably, and making you the actual ruler of the French region. Take note though, you likely will be quite in a bad situation, economically speaking, and from a manpower perspective, so you will need some time to recover after this. So now the final chapter of expansion in the early game for the Engloche is attacking the nation of Brittany. Once you were at war with the French, remember that you should have done the strategic control mission that gives you union over France, as well as a permanent claim on the entirety of the Britain area. Attack the Bretons, and apparently the Pope is not going to join in, but Ulster we're going to be co belligerating since we want to take over all of their lands. Also, make sure you bring back your diplomats so that we can actually attack them, and we will be declaring our war and rushing for their capitals, as well as wiping out their armies whenever we see them. Take note, once you're integrating the nation of Gascony, it should be also the first of your vassals to integrate. You can always concentrate development on their newly added provinces, thus giving London even more development from the French loans. We managed to get 48 in London simply by doing this in the few French lands that we possess right now. You could also do this in the Scottish lands. It will make them more disloyal, but you still should have a truce with them, so not a big deal. Enough time to get them back to loyalty. Right now, London is 59 development in 1464. And with the last holding of the Celtic people in Europe, we now have complete domination over the entirety of the British Isles, as well as some parts of the French region. In fact, quite a few parts of the French region for that matter. Likely, you will have a little bit of a coalition against you, but do not worry. You have truce with the majority of these nations. If you're really worried about it, you can just wait for a couple of years before you peace out in order to lower the amount of nations that do join in a coalition against you. So there you go, waiting for one more month till January for us gave us exactly that effect. We will now concentrate development here, which is going to give us 12 dev in London. And that means we went up to 67. And if you want to really cheese bowl this, you could release Brittany and then you can concentrate development a second time for another eight. And as such, we now have London at 72 
development by 1466. Whilst Brittany is going to be really easy to integrate because most of their lands are trash six development lands. Do take note, a lot of your vassals are going to be disloyal because, well, you've concentrated their lands and that doesn't seem too nice, does it? I do have to point out that it's kind of ridiculous if you just dev up their provinces a few times, they're going to start being a very much loyal after just one month because it will lower down their liberty desire by you developing the lands. So there you go. We lowered their liberty desire by 10 flat by improving this province twice, which we will get the dev back in 1514 if we want to. We now can do a couple more missions such as the conquest of Ireland. And if you don't want to be expanding for a while, you can also disband some of your mercenary units. In fact, most likely some of your units are going to have zero manpower, so it's best to disband them and start using your manpower pool to get proper regular infantry. And through a stroke of good luck, France lost all of its vassals, which means we can attack Orléans as well as Bourbonnais and either pillage capital or fully annex or both, as well as we can attack France in one year once our truce expires. In future wars against the French, before you get the union against them, I actually recommend that you get cash so you can fix your economy, cancel all the cores they have on you, as well as on your vassal Gascony, and pillage capital. We want to do this before we enforce our union against them, as the weaker they are, the faster we integrate them. And we will be feeding them a lot of cores that they have around this other area anyway, so why not profit from their weakened state whilst we can, right? By the way, guys, if you want to watch me do an England run, I plan on starting an England run this week over on Twitch. You can find a link in the description to my Twitch account. Check it out, give me a follow, and see you whenever I go live with the England campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the city of London. 105 dev by 1480. And of course, a triple seven. We got lucky. But really though, we just pissed off a lot of people. You don't want to really see my aggressive expansion map mode. Even nations in the HRE decided they want a piece of me, but eventually the coalition dissipated and it didn't trigger. That being said, having one city with so much dev is insane. 10,000 manpower from this city alone, 6,000 sailors, 101 trade power, and 4.5 tax flat from London, 4.2 production. Basically, London itself is sustaining the entire economy of our empire. After you've managed to integrate your vassals in the French lands and you've consolidated your holdings, future expansion should include, of course, the PU that we still have against the French. Once they lose more lands, you're going to have an even better time feeding them back the cores that they lost. Integrate whatever is left and you don't need to integrate Scotland as you can do it through the formed British nation diplomatically decision. After you've consolidated the entirety of the French region, I recommend that you either expand into the Iberian region or North African one should you wish to, but most importantly, you need to start going into the new world, explore and colonize. As such, when it comes to your ideas, go for quantity first, which will be of great service in the early wars and exploration as your second idea so you can start matching up to the Portuguese and Iberians with future idea groups including economic for the playing toll aspect, trade ideas and quality as well as expansion ideas. Take note that you should always focus on getting all of your trade centers to 15 dev minimum so you can upgrade them to level 2. That means the trade centers you have in Lincolnshire, Sheffield and Gloucester especially since you need the extra trade power in the English channel. Make sure you also set the protect trade edict in these parts as it's going to increase your trade power considerably. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. If we get a thousand likes on this video, I'm also going to do an updated 1.31 guide for the nation of France. Now, I also want to give a very big thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support you've been offering me. I wouldn't be here without you right now. If anybody else wants to become a patron or a channel member, you can check the links in the description. So until the next one, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.